I firmly believe that the game design elements in Persona 3 are what truly make this title shine. However, it seems like the vanilla Persona 3 and Fez receive ever-mounting criticism for their design choices with each subsequent release from the Hashino trilogy of Persona games. Beginning with the first release of Persona 4 in 2008, the gameplay elements and mechanics have continued to improve from a quality of life standpoint. It's not uncommon to hear some complain that it's too difficult to go back to Persona 3 after beginning with one of the later installments of P4 The Golden or Persona 5 for example. Others recommend Persona 3 Portable over Fez on the PS2 for the improved gameplay options alone, but I think that sells the benefits of the original PS2 version short. So I will be providing a defense on their behalf. From the slog of climbing Tartarus to the inability to directly control party members, I will examine how the most controversial and often most frustrating design choices actually contribute to the atmosphere and story of Persona 3, making an already excellent game into something truly memorable. And just as a final warning, there will be heavy Persona 3 spoilers in this video. In comparison to the multiple dungeons found in Persona 4 and Persona 5, especially regarding the added puzzles and overall interactivity in the latter's palaces, Persona 3's Tartarus can seem, well, dull in comparison. But that's honestly the point. The design of Tartarus enhances the most prevalent themes of apathy, depression, and the inevitability of death in P3 in two different ways one of which is explored in the repetitive scenic design of this singular dungeon. Although each block in Tartarus has a different aesthetic design, the fact remains that traversing through floor after floor of the exact same dungeon with the same scenery can get, well, quite boring really fast. This reflects the psychological battle that plagues the members of Seas and the city of Tatsumi Port Island throughout the game in the form of apathy syndrome. Will one find the difficulties of life too overwhelming and choose to become numb and apathetic in order to avoid the highs and lows of emotional pain? Or can one continue to adapt? To find something to continue worth living for despite our deepest flaws, most painful hurts, and ultimately the inevitability that all people will eventually die. Apathy is known to be a common symptom of depression, and these two severe mental struggles can lead one to believe that life is boring and monotonous, with each day bleeding into the next as same old, same old. This is close to the initial mindset of the protagonist even, who was orphaned 10 years prior to the beginning of the game. But through his journey, the fool's journey, he learns to appreciate life despite the darkest moments we all must confront at some point. Diving further into the concept of apathy syndrome, it is explained later in the game that this results when a person's psyche is eaten by shadows. And what exactly are shadows? While the Persona games all explore shadows in various degrees, ultimately they all stay true to the Jungian concept that the shadow is the least desirable aspects that a person finds in their personality. Hence, the individual will choose to repress these facets so that they remain in the unconscious. However, with the arrival of Tartarus in Persona 3's world following the shadow experiments conducted by the Kirijo group, people find themselves having to confront the voice of their shadows. When people cannot accept that the shadow, despite its flaws, is still vital to their functioning and growth as individuals, they can either choose to block it out and regress into apathy syndrome, or even turn into their shadow as is directly shown happening to one man early on in the game. This is why it is so fitting that the largest numbers of shadows are all found within the repetitive scenery of Tartarus. Apathy and depression often goes hand in hand when we confront the darkest aspects of our personalities. 
The second aspect of Tartarus that successfully reflects Persona 3's themes is found in the randomized layouts of the floors. As harsh as it sounds, no one can predict the day that they will die. This unpredictability is perfectly reflected in Tartarus, which is the exact place that Seas puts their lives on the line each night in battle, where the player never knows when a shadow may be lurking just around the corner. On the other hand, the overall design of Tartarus being a singular ascending dungeon with no direction to go but up in order to progress enhances the theme that death is inevitable. I mean, we literally fight the Death Arcana boss in the game as Nick's avatar at the very top of the tower. In addition, this ascension conveys the image of continually rising above problems with new agency. An image that is further captured in the Tartarus OST as it continues to build upon its track by adding new instruments as the player progresses through each block. Moving on, the inability to control party members is probably the most universally frustrating gameplay mechanic within the entirety of Persona 3. You would be hard pressed in finding anyone who wasn't screwed over by a party member's terrible decision at some point. The lacking AI aside, the fact that we, the player, can't input commands for C's members make sense story-wise in Persona 3, since the characters are less reliant on the protagonists, especially in comparison to the MCs in later Hashino installments. Just take a look at the social links in Persona 4 and 5. Oftentimes, any additional growth of a party member occurs in the social link with the MC, symbolizing the fact that the characters trust the protagonist with their problems and are able to arrive at a solution with his help. In turn, they easily listen to the protagonist's strategies in battle. Persona 3, on the other hand, doesn't even contain social links with all the party members, and character growth mostly happens off-screen from the MC's knowledge. This is reflective of how Cease is all rather introverted with each of their personal struggles. Each member initially takes it upon him or herself to reach their desired goal without trying to rely on the others. Akihiko focuses so much on boxing and training so that he can become strong enough to protect those he cares about after the death of his sister. At first, Mitsuru's main motivation for gaining a persona to fight seemed to be an atonement for her grandfather's deeds. It's later revealed that she only wished to protect her father through her own power. Yukari kept her motivation of wanting to discover the truth behind her father's death secretive from the others until the outburst in Yakushima. Ken's motive to exact revenge for his mom, Shinji wishing to atone, and so on. All of this information is revealed entirely off-camera away from any other character, with only one other character present, or suddenly to the group through some in-the-heat-of-the-moment outburst. But most importantly, the majority of these character resolutions happen without input from the protagonist. Each member of Seas finds their own individual resolve to continue living, to refuse to forfeit their life and instead deciding to fight death itself. A resolve that awakens each and every one of their ultimate personas within the context of the main plot. All of these reasons showcase why C's members are much more independent from the group in thought and decision making compared to the investigation team and the Phantom Thieves. Hence, why you can't stop your teammates from constantly trying elemental breaks and failing to heal you when you're barely hanging on. 
And as a final note on this topic, on an author's intent level, Hashino and Sojima have shared in an interview that they purposefully wanted AI-controlled party members in P3, since having the ability to control teammates in this character-driven game, which focuses on exploring the psyche of each individual, just wouldn't have felt right. I'll include a link to that interview down in the description below. Now moving on to P3's human antagonist, Strega actually doesn't appear to be too controversial. This is because they are rarely ever brought up besides the offhand Revolver Jesus mention every now and then. Story-wise, they receive criticism for being lacking, although they fit well within the symbolism of their tarot archetypes. As bosses, Strega takes the cake as easiest to beat within the whole series. It doesn't sit right when just one charged up move is completely enough to OHKO Chidori. But this ease makes sense within the context of the story, since their personas were not awakened normally compared to those of C's. Jin reveals to us that these personas were unnaturally awakened through scientific experiments in the lab. Since the awakenings weren't natural, the per powers of these personas are not fully tamed under each Draga member. This results in their need to take medication to prevent their persona from killing them, as is shown with Chirori in the hospital. Though unfortunately, these medications come with fatal side effects from repressing the power of the persona and slowly cut the taker's life short. So sadly, as much as we all would have liked to have some epic boss battles with Strega, especially with such an amazing boss OST, it just wasn't meant to be within the context of P3's story. Finally, the month of December gets understandable criticism as being the most boring month of the game since there's little to do. Party social links are unavailable during this time, nothing big happens to progress the plot, and no new areas open up in Tartarus. The monotony and isolation throughout the entire dorm nails home the depressive mood of the cast as they struggle to come to terms with their own imminent mortality. On another note, December reflects the tarot themes found in this game though. December, as the final month of the year, reflects the Death Arcana. Tarot cards have both a reverse and an upright position to their readings. In this case of the Death Arcana, the reverse reading symbolizes exactly what you expect. Stagnation, decay, and fear. There may be sadness or a fear that is too overwhelming. The characters in Persona 3 are all struggling to cope with their fears that death is approaching so soon. However, the Seas members come to realize the upright reading of the Death Arcana when they all unanimously decide to hold on to their cherished memories and individual growth from their time in the Dark Hour, instead of choosing to live in ignorant bliss and allowing certain death to loom just over the horizon. The upright reading of the Death Arcana symbolizes new beginnings that one phase in life is coming to an end, and a new one is beginning. The transition from the depressing atmosphere of December to the firm resolve of seas in January enhances this theme. It also rewards the player for refusing to give up on the game, from refusing to completely stop playing and ending their journey prematurely due to boredom or apathy. With the start of January, all new sections in Tartarus open up for the player and the climax of the Fool's Journey, and the entire game is shown at the very end of the month. As an added note, the music called Living With Determination, Iwatodaya Range, that plays in the dorms at the start of the new year reflects this new path forward. The same piano piece that was played during all the sorrowful moments in the game where characters had to confront their grief has now given birth to literally new determination with the formation of the Nyx Annihilation team. 
The added percussion provides a driving force to the piano melody to reflect the renewed agency of C's in their decision to press forward through Tartarus and to reach the top of the tower to give it their all for their own and humanity's right to live to the fullest. In conclusion, Persona 3 seems really depressing and bleak on the surface. But it's the determination of the main characters to press on despite adversity, the ability to recognize even the smallest things that make life worth living, that provides the hopes among the loss and grief that we all will encounter at some point in our lives. All the game elements that I covered really help to convey this mood and tie the themes of the story to the gameplay. Our time on Earth is limited, so it's up to us to make the most out of the time we've got. And with that, thank you so much for watching! What does Persona 3 mean to you? What are the most meaningful or most infuriating gameplay mechanics in Persona 3? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos about the Persona series in the future. So until next time, take care. See ya!